Hey guys, so today we're going to be talking about the history of culinary arts. Um, I can't encourage you enough to um, get out a piece of paper, get out something to write with, make sure you're writing these notes along with me. There's going to be a couple of things that I've notated that are in red that I don't expect you to write out the whole thing. Um, however, if you are um, going to do uh, the next activity, um, you need to have these notes. Uh, PowerPoint is not going to be provided for you directly. Um, so to be able to get started on that assignment, you're going to need to write notes to go along with this. So um, just like anything, um, history is important. Um, what happened years ago uh, really impacts where we are now. Um, and so just like in your social studies classes, you're looking at historical events and figures and how they play into where we are now. Um, same thing happens in, in, as, as we talk about the history of culinary arts. So, there's some key historical figures, obviously. There's a lot out there, but these are some of our big, big, big people. Um, we're gonna talk about each one of them individually. Um, so this first one is gonna be Marie Antoine Carême, okay? Um, Marie Antoine Carême was, um, quote unquote, your first celebrity chef. Um, he was primarily cooking for those um, in the noble class, those people who were wealthy, um, if you will. So he catered um, primarily to the wealthy. So um, you can imagine what his food may have looked like um, years ago. When I say years ago, I mean hundreds and hundreds of years ago, um, catering to the wealthy um, in their big palaces um, and the kinds of foods that they may have dined for. He was known for this elaborate style, almost too elaborate. We'll talk about what his food looks like here on the next slide, but known for his elaborate style of cooking called Grand Cuisine. Um, he simplified sauces by categories. I'm not going to spend a lot of time um, on this point because we'll spend a little bit more time talking about it um, with our next historical figure, but, but sauces are super, super important to culinary. Um, and simplifying those and categorizing those was a great start for where uh, we are today. And um, he established standard uh, techniques. Um, again, I'll elaborate on this in just a moment. Make sure you've written all of these things down. Catered to the wealthy, known for his elaborate style of cooking, known as grand cuisine, simplified sauces by categories, and established standard techniques. Um, if you need to pause me any moment through this video, please make sure that you press the pause button and write these notes down. Um, also credited for the chef toque, uh, we talked about that yesterday. Um, the toque is the hat, the chef hat, um, and it has up to 100 plates on it. Uh, for every skill that a, uh, that a chef has mastered, they get another plate um, on their chef toque. All right, this was Grand Cuisine. We talked about it being overblown, very, very extravagant. Um, and these were more architectural in nature. It wasn't just a plate of food. Um, it was an entire structure of food, if you will. It was based on richness, it was elaborate, um, it was artful in nature, um, overblown, over formal. You'll see that there's a lot of foods that go into these, um, build, building these great, um, th these great pieces de Montres is what they were called. Um, they were huge. Um, and so this was more characteristic of grand cuisine, okay? The grandest of them all is how I usually refer to it. All right, moving on to our next key historical figure. Karim set the groundwork and then Escoffier came in and, and um, uh, refined it even more. He, he made it um, more simple, um, but yet easier for us to, to, more like what we see in modern day. Um, he was known as the, the chef of kings and the king of chefs and his contribution to culinary arts but he created the five mother sauces. So whereas Karem um, categorized sauces, Escofia said, okay, we're gonna create five mother sauces. We're gonna learn about those five mother sauces in culinary arts um, in the uh, level one. Um, you have uh, the Hollandaise, the Espanol, you have the Volute, the Bechamel, and the tomato sauce. Those are your five basic sauces. And then from those foundational sauces, you can create a ton of other mother or small sauces is what we call them. All right, so he categorized those. We still use those today. Culinary um, one, you will learn those five mother sauces. Continue to update the techniques that Karem had started in emotion. So the things we talk about now, 
baking, roasting, grilling, sauteing, pan frying, deep frying, um, uh, boiling, blanching, shocking, all of those techniques, they, they termed. They gave them characteristics. They gave them every single time you do this. When you bake, you always do this. Um, and because of that, they were able to simplify recipes. They were able to say, okay, bake this. And you knew what it was asking you to do. Um, whereas before, there wasn't this, um, there was not this push for professionalism in the, within the field. Escoffier is saying, no, we will take pride in our industry. And so he demanded cleanliness. He was the one that said, um, you are going to wear white chef coats. Our kitchens are going to be refined. The, our kitchens um, are going to work efficiently and effectively. And from that, he brought about the kitchen brigade. There's not going to be mass amounts of, um, of chaos in the kitchen. There's not going to be drinking and rudeness in the kitchen. There is going to be a system. There's going to be order. There's going to be respect. Um, and that kitchen brigade um, is definitely still seen today um, in all sorts of kitchens. And Escoffier was the one that said, we will take pride in our industry. All right. He created more of what we call the classical cuisine. Um, and he, it was simple yet still really elegant. So these kind of, um, these pictures come to mind when I see um, simple yet elegant. I see um, a variety of textures and colors um, and, and artfulness. He abandoned elaborate garnishes and focused more on just seasonal foods. Um, we know that when we focus on seasonal foods, we're getting fresh food. So when we um, eat berries that are in season, they're sweeter, um, they're riper, they're so much better. And so when we focus on seasonal foods um, and fresh foods, we, we just get a better, more wholesome dish um, to start out with. So this was more uh, what he pushed for and how we see um, his impact on culinary today. Some other key historical figures, um, Catherine de' Medici. Now, while she, she only brought culinary um, about, she really kind of helped change the, the face of, of, of culinary. So she, she married a Frenchman. She was originally from Italy. When she came over from Italy and married this Frenchman, she decided she, she brought over all of these delicacies, things like truffles and sweetbreads, which is not actually breads. Go look up sweetbreads. Um, it's not actually bread. But she brought over all of these delica delicacies um, that France had never really experienced before. France had no clue uh, what resources they had right under their fingertips. Um, and when she came about, um, she suddenly, her contributions set about a culinary revolution. France was like, whoa, we have all of these things. We have all of these resources. Um, we have all of this food. Let's do something with it. And so Catherine de' Medici, while she wasn't a chef per se, her delicacies, her coming over to France from Italy brought about this, uh, the, the beginnings of culinary arts flourishing in France. One of her biggest things though, she did encourage table etiquette. Um, so she introduced the use of the fork. Before then, um, the only people who ever ate were with utensils were the noblemen, were the, 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 the people of high, high class. Um, other than that, people used their hands. Um, and so Catherine de' Medici said, no, 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 we're gonna have some table etiquette around here. And she began um, by introducing the fork. Another key historical figure, now she is more of a modern day. Um, she died in our lifetime. Um, and so she is an American female, and that is so important to know. She's American and female. She set about a huge change. Before then, kitchens are demanding. Kitchens are hard work, you're lifting heavy things. Females didn't really operate in the kitchen. And Julia Child set that apart. So Julia Child um, brought French cuisine to America. She was married to another American. Um, he was in the military. He moved to France, and so she moved with him. And while there, she was trying to figure out, what, what am I good at? Um, what can I um, put my interest and value in? And she, she thought about, I'm going to learn how to cook. And so she went to Le Cordon Bleu in France. Um, and because of her training um, at Le Cordon Bleu, because she graduated from Le Cordon Bleu in France, um, 
That said about this change, that bringing the French um, cuisine to America. So she wrote this book, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. And um, because of that book, Americans were better able to understand French techniques and skills. Um, she had her own cooking show. She was located, um, um, or you could find her show on PBS. Um, and she was always known for just making some goofy mistakes. She'd cut herself in the middle of the show. She was just really, really goofy to watch. Um, and every single time, she had a very distinguished voice at the end of every so show, she would say, Bon appetit. Um, and so she was quite a character, um, but she really set about uh, bringing that French cuisine here to America. So the Kitchen Brigade, we talked a little bit about this yesterday. Hopefully you were following along. It is a system of hierarchy. Um, it, about, it added greater efficiency in the kitchen. All of these people are in there. Everyone's doing what they are best at. So a, a pastry chef is doing um, the desserts. They're good at that. They're efficient. They're fast. They're quick. Somebody else is making salad. Somebody else is doing soup. Somebody else is making chicken. Somebody else is working on all of these different products. And because of that, they sped up the efficiency. We still see this um, in all of our kitchens today. So the executive chef, um, he's like the principal of the school, not actually hands-on. He's not actually doing the cooking anymore. The executive chef um, is planning the menus. They're making sure that the ingredients have been purchased. They're doing all of these things. Um, they're overseeing the kitchen staff, just like the principal does um, for, for a school. You've got the sous chef, kind of the, the second in command, similar to that of your assistant principals. Um, they're responsible for food quality. So you've got all these cooks behind, they say order up, and that sous chef is making sure that that order is, is signifying the value that that restaurant has in place. So they're saying, no, 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 this does not suit our needs. This is not going out to the customers until it's been fixed. So the sous chef um, really uh, does the quality. They're not the main cooks either. Again, sous chef, executive chef, they are high in regards to um, their, their responsibility in the kitchen, but they're not responsible directly for the food that goes on the plate for people to consume. However, the line cook is. The line cook is the one that is actually preparing the food um, that is taken out to order. Your pastry chef, responsible for the desserts specifically and any baked goods. And then the garmange, definitely watch your pronunciation here. The garmange is responsible for any cold items. We usually call them the, the, the pantry chef if we were to look um, in the traditional uh, kitchen brigade. And they're preparing cold items. Typically, you're gonna think about um, heavy hors d'oeuvres um, or soups, salads, your cold soups, um, like gazpacho would be an example. Um, and, and soups and salads and sandwiches are primarily their responsibility. All right. Um, here is your traditional um, kitchen brigade. If you want to look a little bit closer, um, you may pause it for a minute and zoom in if you can. Um, again, you've got your executive chef, your sous chef, and then you've got all of these different um, uh, people in charge of different things. And then they very likely have other people who are being trained underneath them, um, learning new skills, maybe they're an apprentice, whatever, um, underneath to, to make sure um, that they are, uh, they've got enough help. 